management of suspected ovarian masses in premenopausal women the rcog guideline is a topic of our discussion today the underlying management rationale is to minimize patient morbidity by conservative management where possible use of laparoscopic techniques where appropriate thus avoiding laparotomy where possible and referral to a gynecological oncologist where appropriate preoperative assessment of women with ovarian masses what is the role of history and examination in the assessment of women with suspected ovarian masses a thorough medical history should be taken from the woman with specific attention to the risk factors or protective factors for ovarian malignancy and a family history of ovarian or the breast cancer Symptoms suggestive of endometriosis should be specifically considered along with any symptoms suggesting the possible ovarian malignancy like persistent abdominal distension, appetite change including increased satiety, pelvic or abdominal pain, increased urinary urgency and or frequency. What blood test should be performed? A serum CA125 assay doesn't need to be undertaken in all premenopausal women when an ultrasonographic diagnosis of simple ovarian cyst has been made. Secondly, the LDH, alpha fetoprotein and HCG should be measured in all women under the age 40 with a complex ovarian mass because of the possibility of the germ cell tumors. It is important to note that CA125 is primarily a marker for epithelial ovarian carcinoma and is only raised in 50% of early stage disease. A serum CA125 assay is not necessarily done when a clear ultrasonographic diagnosis of simple ovarian cyst has been made. If serum CA125 assay is raised and less than 200 units per ml further investigation may be appropriate to exclude or treat the common differential diagnosis and the common differential diagnosis can be seen from this table when serum c125 levels are raised serial monitoring of c125 may be helpful as rapidly rising levels are more likely to be associated with the malignancy than high levels which remain static if serum C125 assay more than 200 international unit per ml, discussion with gynecological oncologist is recommended. What imaging should be implied in the assessment of suspected ovarian mass? What is the role of ultrasound in the assessment of suspected ovarian mass? A pelvic ultrasound is the single most effective way of evaluating an ovarian mass with transvaginal ultrasonography being preferable due to its increased sensitivity over transabdominal ultrasound. What is the role of routine use of computerized tomography and magnetic resonant imaging in the assessment of suspected ovarian masses? At the present time, the routine use of computerized tomography and MRI for the assessment of ovarian masses doesn't improve the sensitivity or specificity obtained by transvaginal ultrasonography in the detection of ovarian malignancy. Routine use of computerized tomography and MRI for the assessment of ovarian masses doesn't improve the sensitivity or specificity obtained by transvaginal ultrasonography in the detection of ovarian malignancy. What is the best way to estimate the risk of malignancy? An estimation of the risk of malignancy is essential in the assessment of ovarian mass. Which RMI should be used? A systematic review of diagnostic studies concluded that RMI1 is the most effective for women with suspected ovarian cancer. Risk of malignancy index B. The RMI was described by Jacob in 1990 and has since been evolved into RMI2, RMI3 and RMI4. How to calculate the RMI1? RMI1 combines three pre-surgical features like serum C125, the menopausal status and ultrasound score U. The RMI is a product of ultrasound scan score, the menopausal status and serum CA125 and the formula is U multiplied by M multiplied by CA125. The ultrasound result is score 1 for each of these characteristics like multilocular cyst, the solid areas, the metastasis, ascites and bilateral lesion.
u is equal to 0 for ultrasound score of 0 u is equal to 1 for ultrasound score of 1 and u is equal to 3 for ultrasound score of 2 to 5. The menopausal status is scored as 1 is equal to premenopausal and 3 is equal to postmenopausal. Postmenopausal can be defined as the woman who have had no periods for more than a year or woman over the age of 50 who had hysterectomy. Serum CA125 is measured in international unit per ml and can vary between 0 to hundreds or even thousands of units. If, is there uh, another way to estimate accurately a risk of malignancy in premenopausal women without using CA125? There are simple ultrasound rules derived from the IOTA group. The use of the specific ultrasound morphological findings without C125 has been shown to have high sensitivity, specificity and likelihood ratios. If not clearly classifiable from these rules, further investigation by specialist in gynecological ultrasound is appropriate. Now we will talk about the B and M rule from the IOTA group ultrasound rules to classify the masses as benign and malignant. The B rules contain the unilocular cyst and there are presence of solid components where the largest tumor component is less than 7 mm. There are presence of acoustic shadowing, smooth multilocular tumor with the largest diameter of less than 100 mm and there is usually no blood flow. When we talk about M rule, there are irregular solid tumors, ascites, at least four papillary structures, irregular multilocular solid tumors with the largest diameter of equal to or more than 100 mm, and there is very strong blood flow. What, in a, what other current guidelines are in use? The American College of Obstetrician and Gynecologist and the Society of Obstetrician and Gynecologists of the Canada have guidelines for the management of premenopausal women with a pelvic mass. Management of ovarian masses presumed to be benign in non-emergency situations. Can asymptomatic women with simple ovarian cyst be managed expectantly? Women with small, less than 50 mm diameter, simple ovarian cysts generally do not require the follow-up as these cysts are very likely to be physiological and almost always resolve within 3 menstrual cycle. Women with simple cysts of 50 to 70 mm in diameter should have yearly ultrasound follow-up and those with the larger uh, simple cyst should be considered for either further imaging by MRI or surgical interventions. Now, how should persistent asymptomatic ovarian cysts be managed? Ovarian cysts that persist or increase in size are unlikely to be functional and may warrant surgical management. Does the use of combined oral contraceptives help in the treatment of functional ovarian cyst. The use of combined oral contraceptive pills does not promote the resolution of functional ovarian cyst. Is the laparoscopic approach better for the elective surgical management of ovarian masses? The laparoscopic approach for the elective surgical management of ovarian masses presumed to be benign is associated with lower post-operative morbidity and shorter recovery time and is preferred to laparotomy in suitable patients. Laparoscopic management is cost effective because of the associated earlier discharge and return to work. In the presence of the large masses with the solid components, for example, large dermoid cyst, laparotomy may be appropriate. Who should perform laparoscopic surgery for a presumed benign ovarian cyst? Laparoscopic management of presumed benign ovarian cyst should be undertaken by a surgeon with a suitable expertise and suitable experience and appropriate equipment whenever local facilities permit. Should an ovarian cyst be aspirated? Aspiration of ovarian cyst either vaginally or laparoscopically is less effective and is associated with high rate of recurrence. 
is it important to avoid the unplanned rupture of cyst spillage of the cyst contents should be avoided where possible as preoperative and intraoperative assessment cannot absolutely preclude malignancy consideration should be given to the use of a tissue bag to avoid the peritoneal spill of the cystic content bearing in mind the likely preoperative diagnosis and when should an oophorectomy be performed the possibility of removing an ovary should be discussed with the woman preoperatively how should an ovarian mass be removed where possible removal of the benign ovarian mass should be via umbilical cord this results in less post operative pain and quicker retrieval time than uh, when using the lateral cord of the same size now this table shows the types of adnexal masses the benign uh, ovarian masses include these types like functional cyst endometrioma serous cyst adenoma mucinous cyst adenoma and mature teratoma the other types include benign non ovarian primary malignant ovarian and secondary malignant ovarian masses and we will discuss these in the uh, later slides so among the benign ovarian masses the first one is the functional cyst which is thin wall and unilocular cyst with acoustic enhancement and absence of internal echoes the second one is endometrioma which is thin wall unilocular cyst with acoustic enhancement and absence of internal echoes third one is serous cyst adenoma which are usually composed of unilocular or at times a multilocular cysts filled with uh, clear watery fluid the next type is mucinous cyst adenoma and mucinous cyst adenoma individual locules may vary in imaging appearance due to difference in the degree of hemorrhage and protein contents the last type is that of the mature teratoma which appear as densely ecogenic protuberances that project into the cystic masses among the benign non ovarian masses we would include the paratubal cysts which are unilocular and anechoic hypoechoic on ultrasound the hydrocelpenges the appearance of hydrocelpings is that of the hypoechoic cystic adnexal mass next is that of the tuber ovarian abscess ultrasound show a complex adnexal structure with a thick wall and internal echoes likely pus with the cellular debris The peritoneal pseudocyst appear as well circumscribed usually round or oval peripancreatic fluid collection of homogeneously low attenuation the appendiceal abscess may manifest as cystic masses a mixed solid and cystic mass diverticular cyst appear as colonic wall of more than 5 mm thick fat enhancement with the evidence of abscess visualized diverticuli air artifacts you may have the pelvic kidneys sometime known as the sacral kidney these are the kidneys that are fixed in bony pelvis or across the spine the other type of ovarian mass include primary malignant ovarian mass which include germ cell tumor epithelial carcinoma and sex cord tumors the last type is that of the secondary malignant ovarian mass which are predominantly the breast and gastrointestinal carcinomas so that was a summary of ovarian cyst management in the premenopausal woman subscribe on obsengani and follow the facebook page of on obsengani